Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Cheat Codes. I'm very excited today for the guest that we have because she literally has the words digital asset management in her title. I get so jazzed up when I see that. Marla Watson, welcome to Marketing Cheat Codes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, it's interesting. You don't just, some folks don't just start in digital asset management as a, as a category, as a career, but you have these like beautiful, like logical progressions, working with brands, building up the progressive layers of a very complex, in de- highly in demand, hard to find skill set around digital asset management. Um, Marla, take me back to the beginning. Where, where did it start for you? And when did you start to find yourself in this world of uh, digital asset management? Um, I would say a long time ago, and it wasn't directly through digital asset management. I am originally came to Los Angeles. I'm based in Los Angeles um, to go to UCLA and to study film and to study entertainment. So once I got my degree, I started doing kind of PA work and stuff. But eventually I needed a real job with insurance and everything. And I did a lot of research for documentary films. So a lot of the archives and libraries remembered me. So I got my first real full-time job at UCLA Film and Television Archive, where I started out as a collections assistant, but quickly made my way to uh, an archivist. And I was at UCLA Film and Television for about almost 13 years before I had this kind of pivot because at the time I was at UCLA, I did a lot of cataloging. I did a lot of inventorying. I did a lot of kind of metadata management and stuff, but I didn't know that it was called metadata management. I thought I was just putting stuff in categories. Um, So I got my master's degree along the way. And as soon as I graduated, I mean, LinkedIn has been great. They started Uh hitting me up and I'm just like, hey, what's going on here? A lot of the studios needed help dealing with digital asset management, metadata, taxonomy. And that's what I've been doing at my job. But it was just kind of archivist work pick up the slack. There's not enough catalog- uh, catalogers. So that's how I got into digital asset management, really through my experience being an archivist, uh, going to library school and basically being a kind of <laughs> forever organizer of content. And I th- would you say for, for folks that don't know that term archivist, um, mm-hmm. can you in just explain that a little more? on how, how that comes together, the, the role of that, and uh, just in, sort of in simple terms. Okay. Um, an archive is like a library, but it's where you house your physical collections of stuff. So you might have papers or documents, but I worked with moving images. So all types of stuff, video, film, 60 millimeter film, all these kind of uh, old technologies be kept at the archive. And the person who works with a lot of these different technologies in the physical, like inventory and collections is the archivist. They are usually the first eyes who will go through the uh, collection, assess the collection, make inventory reports and condition reports of how the collection is, and eventually make cataloging records or inventorying records. Most of the time, an archivist will make an inventory record and it gets passed on to the cataloging team. Um, But I did both because a lot of nonprofits are short staffed, so you wear many hats. So I started cataloging stuff and the kind of mark catalogs, which is the Library of uh, Congress catalog style. So doing that work very kind of similar to taxonomy because you're dealing with a lot of subject headings, you're dealing with a lot of organizing, and ultimately you're dealing for search. So you have their users, clients who come into the library or come into the archive who are researching stuff. You're the one who are trying to put kind of order to that, adding keywords, adding description to that. So 
instead of just dealing with the physical side, I dealt with a lot of the digital side because we were just merging into uh, moving some of our collection to digital streaming. So that's my initial experience. That's excellent. Now, this site, metadata is so powerful. You've, you've had that literally in one of your, your titles um, at um, a previous employer, TMZ, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. Did some research on you on LinkedIn. And so how does, that's exciting. So for folks that know the brand TMZ, what they do, how can they relate to that as a consumer? How did that metadata help some of those experiences that they maybe saw out uh, in consuming the media? Yeah, TMZ was a very unique environment because they're kind of, they're entertainment, but they're news too because they break stories. So their taxonomy didn't fit the standard news taxonomy because most users go on, they want to know about gossip. They want to see celebrity mugshots. They want to see basically (laughs) what's the bromance happening or who's the new relationships. And that's the new kind of metadata category or terms that I developed while I was at TMC. Um, It helps because we were basically trying to create categories for search for users to get them to stay on the website longer. So making those different categories made sense. And after I came there when TMZ, I think was maybe about seven years old, and they did not have any kind of standardized metadata or taxonomy schema set up. It was basically what the producers had from the news desk and they gave, and this is the keywords that they gave, but making kind of a hierarchy and kind of sense and how we can merge categories or develop new categories that would be interesting for the viewers of TMZ. That's how I started. Excellent. So it it sounds like there's a cheat code in there as well for you've got a a brand, an organization that doesn't have, I'll call it a standard taxonomy. What was like the, when did you realize, you know, we're going to have to do something very specific to this brand or change it? What was that cheat code for folks who might be going into a similar situation where it doesn't look like what we've seen before, but we've got to do something bespoke for this brand? Um, One of the things that I looked at, I I basically, you go, you research the website and the content they have online. You see how they have been operating for all of those years. And you try to find a schema that's out there that might match. So these schemas, the way that they actually describe content, there's several schemas for different lines of business. Uh, There's different news ones. There's ones for entertainment. Uh, There's ones for television. Um, There's a whole series of schemas, but nothing fit exactly. So what I did in my cheat code was pulling the ones that did. They did talk about TV. They talked about film. uh, But there were those other things like sports and there were the other ones of kind of people who are celebrities, but you don't know what they're celebrities for um, or exactly what they did to become a celebrity. There are the folks who are politicians. So you kind of pull from the different schemas to develop and make that one that would fit for that particular company. So I do reference, since they ultimately are a news site, I do reference the key news categories and especially lean heavily on their entertainment categories. Um, But there were different ways to make those specific metadata terms and those specific metadata filters or facets when you're building that taxonomy to make it flow. Mm -hmm. And also you speak to the producers, you speak to the creative staff of how users actually come into the website and what they look for. And you get those key terms. And that's the type of stuff that you incorporate into your taxonomy. Because basically, we're trying to get more users or more viewers to come to the website and stay there longer. What interesting content would be relevant to them? And how do we describe that content? And figuring out those key terms is really a partnership with uh, a lot of the creative staff uh, that I work with and the library staff. We kind of bring that order to things. 
Yeah, let's let's talk about that for a, a little bit because everything mm-hmm. you described sounds very complicated, complex. I want to f- let's talk about team and people and you've 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 built teams, you've built these support structures to manage the activation and implementation of of DAM uh, strategies like librarians, taxonomists, uh, publishing ops specialists, folks who can specialize in cataloging and maintaining those taxonomies. And then now you're working with these creative teams. What's Let's talk about a cheat code in building a team and uh, roles and skills and, and working cross-functionally with creative departments. What are your thoughts on a cheat code for that? Um, well, see what your biggest need is. Normally with digital asset management, most of the time we come in after the fact. They realize that, hey, we can't find stuff. Uh, <laughs> everything's mixed up. We, we've lost stuff. We've had to do extra shoots. We'd have to do spend extra money finding things. So they bring someone like me in. But one person, especially if you have a massive body of work, can't do everything. We can formulate a structure but when it comes through going over the old content, that's where we think about, hey, what type of support am I going to need to go through their archive, to go through their current day-to-day stuff? Can I manage that by myself? Or is it something that is cranking 24 hours like a news site that we're going to need some extra help and maybe some librarian support? Usually I lean on librarians because they do have that kind of rounded experience of being able to catalog, being able to know about subject categories loosely or really having intense experience with taxonomies. Um, So they are the ones that I lean on first, but then there are the specializations that you might need, like the taxonomists who really, really delve into that taxonomy, make updates, make changes and stuff based on how the business grows and develops. So those are the key ones. But then you, if you're dealing with entertainment assets, there are also yeah. the partners that you need on the production side. You need the folks who are going to give that rich metadata, those the initial descriptions about the content and make sure that metadata is given to us. Because quite often, usually you come in and you'll get maybe a piece of media and there's a file name or there's a title card. But you really, it might be an hour long, but you don't know what it's really about. Having that information about what the content is about is crucial because that's how we add that rich uh, rich description. Otherwise, it takes time. It takes eyeballs to go through all of that, develop that summary, develop those keywords. When I know along the way through the production process, this information is being collected already. So finding that partnership either with someone, a producer, a coordinator, someone who is organizing that, someone who is doing scheduling or so, or even just the content creators, they are the ones, the writers, the the audio folks, they are the ones who know how to categorize their content and what is key to them of organizing content. We bring along those terms to help them organize, mm-hmm. but we also add terms to help the outsiders their users, other right. people on different teams find that content. So your your metadata, so you've got all the folks who've got these special skills that can go through a discovery process to collect the uh, the qualitative uh, data associated, in, in quantitative, I'm sure, uh, data to then go and enrich the, the metadata strategy. You're then mm-hmm. going have to add another layer to enrich it to make it um, usable, consumable to, from an end user perspective. It, metadata, it sounds like it is the linchpin for good content experiences. Have yes. you seen, what are, what are some of the, is there a cheat code in there to know that, to, to test, to enrich the metadata, to make sure that you're constantly keeping it um, cleansed and right. enriched for uh, the cheat code is, <laughs> I don't know if it's really a cheat code, but it's really having partnerships with the other teams, the product creators. So you will, and anybody, content creators, the product team, 
what are their goals? What are they looking for users to look at? Um, what new features do they want to enhance? After a user comes to the website, where do they want the user to go next? What's priority for them? We try to build that in with our taxonomy by talking to, the, to them, getting that information, and trying to enhance that taxonomy. Not just description, but description that would be valuable on all sides. So internally for the different teams, but externally for the users, and also, of course, for the library and staff, because even the library or the digital asset management team, we, we know how, we know where everything is, but we want everybody else to know where everything is. So that whole search component, that is one of our key goals. So people can find the stuff that they're actually looking for. We just try to make it easier for them. That's awesome. Now, Marla, this is Marketing Cheat Codes. We'd like to have fun and ask about video games. Is there any video game experiences or gaming that you've done that uh, that we all need to know about? Uh, it's been a long time ago since <laughs> I did games. Uh, did the Nintendo stuff. Um, those, uh, but no, I actually used to go to a lot of arcades and play a lot of the arcade games, whether it was pinball or regular like video arcade games. But a lot of that stuff has moved into gaming. And quite honestly, uh, when you have kids, the gaming stuff kind of dropped. <laughs> nice. We're playing new games now. We're doing a, the adult version of cheat codes in, in real life. Um, that's awesome. Thank you. Now, now take me to your current state to you know, to have a role that has digital asset management in its title. What are your you know, you've evolved these skills, you've had these experiences now. What is what would you say your why is now with having amassed such a, an amazing career progression? When you go when you work with your brand now, what is the what is it that you set out to do? every day and your why, your mission uh, for the day? Well, the simple thing is to make their job easier. That's one. But also to build a evolving dam, a dam that can grow with the company, that has that flexibility and bandwidth that it will be a dam that can grow for many, many years. There and kind of look forward to the needs of the company. How are they going to use this dam? Is it just going to be a storage place? Are they going to uh, basically the next level of using that metadata collected in the dam system and use it for other teams, whether it is to enhance the user experience on the outside, enhance the product um, by adding descriptive metadata that would help uh, pinpoint folks to come to the product more or to make the product more sticky. So different keywords, subject categories, recommendations, working with all the different teams from analytics, data scientists, machine learning, the product team, working with them, using the data that we collect in the dam system. That to me excites me the most right now because it's just like we can set up the dam, we can have it in storage, Uh, storage for the company, but what can it do next? How can we help even more? And with dam systems, the longer you have it, the more data you're sitting on top of. Everybody needs data. So we like to share that and see where our data can be functional for them. Or maybe there's some areas in the dam that we could be picking up data for different teams and we'll start collecting those new metadata categories so different teams can have access to it. That's awesome. I love that word you used, an evolving dam. We've had folks on the show, they, they've they described dam as it's a restless technology. It doesn't like to sit still. It likes to change and, the, and uh, based on new uh, forms of content, new channels, new sets of data that you're talking about. It's this, it's got to be in this constantly evolving changing state to be adaptive uh, for the brand. Um, mm-hmm. that, is, that is absolutely the, 
uh, like the next level in digital asset management. Uh, now you were hitting on the future too. I want to go here with you. If you could look in your into your crystal ball of uh, what's in the future for Dam in the space, um, you know, as a as a master of the the, the Dam uh, space, what do you what does that future look like for Dam uh, and practitioners around it? Hmm. I am thinking that the dam, I mean, even now, it's affecting the core product, especially right now with all the streaming wars and the different areas where people are looking for people to go to their channel or whatever their streaming service is. Um, The dam can help by providing that metadata or tags that can get guide users to go to that different type of content. Right now, if you look at most services, things are set up in different categories. The dam sets up things in different categories. We can capture those same categories, but we can also do the next step. What like content is similar to a piece of popular content that we can recommend that's existing in the dam? So we could provide those recommendations based on the linkage of uh, content or similar content. So linked content, give that link content as a recommendation so a user could stay in the application or the streaming service sooner. So if you see a movie and you like this movie, here's recommendations to action movies that might be of your taste. And it's That much reminds me what, of how like Spotify works. Mm-hmm. Spotify, Netflix, they all work that way. Um, but I think right now they're just touching the surface of how mm-hmm. they can really categorize content for the individual experience. Wow. So the idea of we've now have evolving dams, we have smart, these smart content hubs that are uh, prescriptive, that can serve up recommendations. All of that is, and if I go back to your, some of your previous cheat codes, all of that is, is really dependent on these, the data layer, the metadata, the taxonomy in order to support that, that content experience of the future. Yes. It's like my next hire is always a really good taxonomist. They, I am glad that career path is growing and growing because it is a science and it is a specialty, but they are the masters of kind of organizing this data. But data is large. A lot of these services they have multiple different areas. So having that specialist who can work in those particular areas of entertainment, which is where I have my most experience in the entertainment genres, um, is wonderful and desperately needed. Um, We all create taxonomy, but also updating that taxonomy on a regular basis, expanding that taxonomy. Those are things that are really really important because a taxonomy is something also that evolves. It grows depending on how your business grows. That's awesome. I love that cheat code too on your next hire. <laughs> that sounds yep. like, I get that question all the time, you know, Ed, what, you know, what should our team look like? Who do we hire? What are the skills? What are the resources? What's that operating model? And these, you know, these roles and skills are, are very talented folks, specialists who, uh, can really get the job done. Um, that's awesome. Marla, thank you. How can folks, um, thank you for all these cheat codes. How can folks get in touch with you? What's Where's a good place to, to find you in the digital world? LinkedIn. That's the yeah. easiest. <laughs> part. But um, yeah, reach out to me on LinkedIn. I think that's going to be the easiest way. I'm, I'm hesitant with the work because it's just like it's work. But LinkedIn, um, always on a regular basis. It's one of my social sites um, of networking and just meeting folks and getting in touch with old friends and colleagues. So that's the best place to reach out to me. But Marla, thank you so much for coming on marketing. What's that? No, I I was just going to give another tip of another cheat code. You have a third hire anyone who can do governance, governance, data stewards, 
have who are really kind of the master in kind of doing the rules of how we can use these taxonomies, how we can use the dam, how we can use our content. That is seriously important. Uh, dam folks in general, digital asset managers, we do this, but we're more generalists where these folks focus. And as the business gets bigger, you're going to need folks who really focus in those specific, really crucial areas. So those are the three, librarian, taxonomist, and governance. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we've got uh, a whole new set of cheat codes. Really excited that you uh, shared them to the world with us. Thanks for coming on the show. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs>